Thank you oh. for joining us at this live Q&A of Warsaw Film School and the two YouTube premieres of High Heels and Sonder. And welcome to Juan Bermudez, Karol Vo, and Grzegorz Tatar that are with us today to talk about your amazing films. So first of all, congratulations. Uh, both films have made amazing success on film festivals and won many awards. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Guys, I wanted to start off by asking each one of you, was there a particular event or time that you recognized that filmmaking was not a hobby, uh, but that you wanted it to be your life and living? So maybe we can start with Juan Bermudez, the director of both of the films. Uh, well, uh, luckily, I found out really early in my life that I wanted to, to do film. Uh, I didn't re like, I didn't really attempt to do anything else. So, so I would say, let's say, no, there was not a time in my life where I didn't want to do films or where I thought it was like a hobby or something like that. But I think, of course, it gets more and more and more serious every time that you make a new film. It has to be bigger. It has to be better. It has like you have to be pushing yourself and challenging yourself. So like on that on that principle, I think, yeah, <laughs> for sure, for sure. Every time that you make a new film, it's a new challenge and you like ask yourself all the time, like, am I being professional enough? You know, so uh, Grzegorz. Uh, when, the cinematographer of High Heels. Hello. When Hello. did you realize that filmmaking was uh, the life that you wanted? I think that was for me end of high school or beginning of, of my first uh, studies, which I quickly dropped. And I think that was like this this edge when I realized that no, it's that direction. So. Yeah, and it keeps going. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. yeah. And Carol, the producer? Yeah, actually, like uh, in a exact opposite to Juan, I, I realized it really late. And actually, like it happened in school. Like I was studying before, uh, before I entered the Warsaw Film School. I studied uh, um, uh, economics and then later I studied project ma management. And my fiance was uh, um, studying set design, and I was helping her with like some small projects. And I figure out that like I am not happy in like in uh, in uh, 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 Warsaw School of Economics, and then uh, I, uh, that I wanted to try something else. So I started a second uh, uh, second uh, uh, studies uh, in Warsaw Film School. Um, on production and like the first month when I started doing the movies, I was, I was uh, very excited and like it was. I, I felt that this is it. Like uh, there is something that combines like what I know how to organize like people, like budgets and stuff, and and there was this artistic part and like uh, this feeling that once you are done, you have something like physical that will stay with you forever. Like the movie is like a memory. Uh, uh, it, like uh, for me, even stronger, like than the photography or or, uh, or 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 notes or whatever. Like because like it 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 brings all the stuff that whenever I watch a movie that I did, I remember everything, every part of the production, every struggle that we have, and every like every like funny stuff that was happening there with my friends. Great. Uh, so Juan, you grew up in Colombia. Mm -hmm. And I know that uh, you studied film techniques in Bogota, your hometown, before moving to Poland uh, to join the International Directing BA course at Warsaw Film School, uh, which you joined in 2015. Do you feel that you represent Colombian cin cinema? And where do you put yourself within that discourse? And also, how was moving to Poland to study in a totally different country? Uh, okay, so so one by one. I, I don't think I represent Colombian cinema. I also don't think I represent Polish cinema. And I somehow don't fit in any. And I'm in the middle of everything. 
I I don't like I think I have very like certain elements from Colombian cinema and also certain elements from from all the time that I got in Poland that feel that feel like part of that identity but maybe that mixture makes it somehow unique and and I, I hope I can exploit it to like for their films and, and for their experiences but but I think it also has fit like like it has nourished my career and my way of seeing things and my way of telling stories it's to have these completely different um, like approaches to filmmaking. Uh, I used to study, I, I did study film techniques in Bogota and then I moved to Poland, which was a night to like day, day and night difference. I I was really surprised by, by VSF. I was very gladly surprised actually by VSF, by how intensive it is, by how, how much of a, I don't, I don't want this to sound bad, but how much of a struggle it was, you know, like, because it, because it is really a challenge. It was like, okay, you have to put yourself all the time to the top of your abilities and you have to make a better film every time. And from the first year you have to like push and push and push and push constantly. And, and it was like an immersion into film. Like the, the, the school didn't allow, well, at least to me, it didn't allow me to think of anything else that was not film all the time. Either it was my project or somebody else's project that I was working in. And that was really, really, uh, interesting because I think storytelling us in every form of language it's a muscle that you develop and that you like as long as you practice even more you become better at it but also it needs to be practiced so I think this school was for sure an experience to that that helped me a lot to develop uh, let's say a language a way of talking and and a way of communicating with films great thank you so much um both to uh, Juan uh, Grzegorz and Carol, what made you decide to uh, apply for studies at Warsaw Film School? Who's first? Uh, <laughs> <you. Me. laughs> yeah. uh, I knew that I wanted to be in Warsaw. And to be honest, that was the, the only option. And maybe not only, but the best, basically. And I even applied to to Łódź, but when I heard that I um, like um, after exams, uh, I got accepted. Basically, I, I never went to Łódź again, <laughs> and, and that's it. I stayed in, in in Warsaw Film School, and yeah, it was like few opinions on on the internet from friends and all that decided that I went where I where I am, where I what I finished. <laughs> Great. And Carol? Well, I, I, I partially explained that why, why uh, film school, why Warsaw Film School. Mostly like the same as uh, Grzegorz, I wanted to stay in Warsaw because I, I also knew like the all the um, commercial uh, film production in Poland like focuses new Warsaw. So this is also the best place to get like some uh, outside experience and like to actually work uh, even uh, du during studies. And uh, yeah, and like uh, even even if I was not sure at the beginning, like I said, like the first few, like the first few weeks, like the first few movies, uh, actually I didn't start working with Juan like at the very beginning. We started working on the second or the, or the third exercise, but like after we started working, like uh, actually I, the first thing I did was with Gregos actually without Juan. Uh, <laughs> And uh, the major thing, like the something that I was really proud of, uh, and like after we did that, uh, like I knew that like this is this is the place that I want to stay, and like I stayed here because like uh, after I finished studies, I, I I started working in Warsaw Film School, uh, even before I finished, like I was I was hired even during my studies by by Mr. Shishitsky to be a, a a production manager in school and to take care of like school uh, productions. So Juan, what made you make that big uh, uh, transition from Hi. warm, warm Colombia to maybe uh, friendly and warm uh, country, but uh, colder weather? I I wish I could say I really wanted to be in Warsaw, but the reality <laughs> is that I arrived to a country without even knowing how to say Jendobre. So like, it it I think it was just. 
a way of um, I finished my, my studies here and I wanted to explore something different. I've always felt really close to European cinematography, I mean, to European cinema in general. And um, and then so I, I said, I need to go to Europe. And in the whole research of like, where am I going to go next? I was very lucky to find out that, that USF was opening the first time of the international course. Uh, so, so we were actually part of the first generation of internationals uh, that that got this like very crazy experience. And it was yeah, actually Poland was a very warm and welcoming country to me. Uh, a bit cold sometimes, but I'm, I feel okay in that. <laughs> like, like the winter was never a problem to me. And and as as Carol said, like the moment that you start doing the exercises and you find a somehow a group and a crew that makes you feel comfortable that you that makes you feel like you can like say the things that you want to say cinematically speaking and you simply don't want to move you know like you just want to do another project with them and another project with them and that is i think really really awesome so some cl clever person once said it all starts with the script or maybe not maybe it starts with with the, just the idea but when do you know that a script is ready to shoot so what is your process of getting there from that initial idea and what made you want to tell the stories of high heels and of sonder i think i think that you never like in every part of the, of the process of a cinematic process you never know when it's ready like you do <laughs> never like you're doing the script and you and you always think it's going to be better and when you're shooting the film, you always think you need more takes. And when you're post-producing the film, you really need more time. All the time, it can be better. But at some point, you just need to understand that the, the film is alive itself. So like, you need to let it go. And the same happens on the script. Like You say, OK, it, what is more important? It's more important to see the film. It's, it's more important than writing it. So like, if I feel comfortable enough, then we just do it. And well, it's not just like feel comfortable, you know, like, like you pass through a whole process, you ask a lot of opinions, you, you end up with a story that you feel cohesive, and then you jump into like, okay, let's, let's try to shoot it and, and take the best out of it. And the notion about Sonder and, and, um, and High Heels, well, for, it's, it's a bit different, but for Sonder, it, it comes in the title, it comes in this idea that, that everybody else around you is facing a problem and it's facing something in their own life and you simply do not realize and so there is that moment of realization you know like that moment when you see oh wow everybody has a complex life that is as complex as mine and i wanted to explore that concept and i found out the best way to explain that concept was to focus on different characters that were somehow interconnected and for high heels i it was the idea like the, this feeling of of uh, being able to talk but not talking because you feel like the other person should talk first and that mm -hmm. is a, a, a thing that we try to explore throughout the whole process of the of the film which was you have these two characters that are it's not that they're mute but it's just that the conflict that is between them has already somehow been spoken and 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 they are waiting for the other one to start the conversation but it never happens. And I, mm. and I think that that was a very beautiful way of showing conflict. Um, so, yeah, uh, I, I think those were the, the fundamental factors that, that drove me to like write the stories as I wrote them. Also, I was in love a bit with some images. And, and I think more than an idea, I, I usually start my processes by by, by an image that I really like and I get fixated on and around that image I start constructing everything else. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting you talk about the image because my next question is what was the formalistic and cinematic approach to high heels? Uh, because we have with us also the cinematographer uh, Grzegorz who is also a Warsaw Film School alumni. So Grzegorz, how early on did you join the project in the pre-production and how was it working with the director Juan Bermudez? To be honest, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> if, if I remember correctly, that, that, that was from the very beginning. I, I like, think from the very start, beginning. We, but... because, 
Yeah, because actually we had three scripts. If I remember, we wanted we wanted to make yeah. a, we wanted ah, to make yes, three short films yes, 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 together. Yes. yes. Yeah, yes. and and high heels is one one part. One is one part. Yeah. 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 So yeah, so it was from the beginning. But you're you were asking about like the the concept. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was very simple because uh, we didn't want to dis distract audience with the image with like it needed to be pretty but not too complicated or, or something like that so we used a lot of like natural light and and even if not we were trying to um keep it simple basically mm -hmm. and and frame it in the way that uh we enhance this this conflict between the characters and it's the whole structure we we kind of uh, we are thinking of um, in the pre-production to step by step reveal more and more information. So um, I think we, we did it in the final film. Hopefully, it is, it is very interesting. So, sorry, I, it, it was very interesting because we like there. There is a person who is missing in this who is missing in this meeting, so to speak, which is Olivia, which is yeah. the, other, the other head of the departments that always construct construct these images. Like, I mean, all the films are very much thanks to her, and everything yeah. that we have made together. It's like she's a gigantic part of it. And for the film, she was doing so out of the world. You know, it was so colorful, and the and the color palette was so heavy. And we were basing ourselves in like Almodovar and 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 Vigas Luna and a bunch of other stuff and um, Carlos Saura and, and a bunch of like very heavy Spanish colorful cinema for the set design. And then we talked with that that like, okay, we need to like somehow keep it really simple, <laughs> simple and, and, and yeah, really clear. Yeah, and add to that information, the thing that I never been in Spain or any like <laughs> similar country, let's say. And basically, I was only basing my 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 vision on on the images of the samples which Juan provided, or on, on other films, or something like that. And we needed to adapt all all that into Polish. Or yeah, streets, or yeah. apartments, locations, and to the budget, of course. So it was nice hybrid. Like it is. It is very beautiful event. because uh, it is a film seen like a film that somehow is a universe that we don't know. You know, I'm also not Spanish. Mm. I didn't grow up listening to flamenco. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we, it's a film from a universe that we don't know, but we all somehow project and, and and imagine and we construct it based on imagination which i think i think some like created this oniric experience you know this like where, where is this happening yeah and i think not only the the color palette and the set design which is amazing in high heels but also you paid a lot of attention to sound design um and i think um if you would like to share a little bit to our online um, audience uh, why you decided, you mentioned it a little bit in the beginning, why you um, didn't want to include any dialogues, but how did the music and sound design have an important value in the film and how did you think about the sound design? Uh, well, there is this challenge always when you're, when you're filming something and it's like, do I really need to say this or is my image strong enough that it's going to say it by itself, you know, like whatever and that I'm trying to communicate. And, and it was a challenge that we decided to adopt from the very beginning to make a film that didn't somehow feel like a music video, you know, it's not, it's not a music video that you put some music and that's it. It's like, no, let's try to make a film that films that feels like, like a cinematic piece without talking. And it was for sure a challenge. And it had to rely heavily on, on sound design and music. Uh, we Carol was like extremely helpful on getting us an amazing musician, amazing dancers, amazing like like people who were very professional at what they were doing. So the music feels very authentic for the film, very very cohesive with the idea of the film that we wanted to project. And in terms of the sound design, it was we had to construct a universe that was based on this like 
very tiny elements because the story is not about something crazy. The story is about normal people in a normal marriage having a normal, well, normal crisis. It's about the human emotion. So you mm. cannot just be putting sounds from like Star Wars. Mm. You know, mm. you ne you need to construct this universe based on like the ticks and the and the and the utensils that you eat with and the the room tone of this like place at night that feels somehow empty, but it's not empty. You know, it 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 and it I think it creates a space and it adds a lot of tension to the story because of the sound of the way that the sound design was created. Yeah, uh, you mentioned uh, Carol being an important part of the film. So, Carol, can you tell us a little bit about your role as uh, a producer? How long was your pre-production, production, and post-production process, and how involved were you in the productions? And how did your collaboration start? Well, we. Like, as I said, we started working with Juan. I started working with Juan. And I'm talking we because, like, I'm also including Olivia. Uh, because, uh, as Juan said, like, she was also a big part of every project as a set designer. But, uh, uh, like, from the very beginning, like, from the first idea that Juan had uh, about this uh, uh, this this movie, we, even without the script, we already knew about this idea. He already talked on a meeting at our place or when we were out or whatever. Like, as I said, we had uh, we had two, uh, Juan wrote two other scripts that we also wanted to, to do. Obviously, we did not manage due to like budget constraints. Uh, but uh, yeah, so like, it's hard to pinpoint one moment when we like, started pre-production because like we were talking about like how we can approach the the, the project like from like from months before right we, even when one didn't even have like a very uh, like a polished uh, polished script uh, like more like a bunch of ideas um, um uh, also Grzegorz uh, talked uh, before about like that we kept uh, the production in terms of like lighting and like uh, cinematography simple uh, which is true but like we we put like very uh, 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 much of our effort and like budget and stuff in those scenes where we have uh, our uh, beautiful dancer dance, dance, dancing yeah. dancing in a, on, on this like blue 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 um, uh, how, how you call it like curtains yeah, like and stuff yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah. like this was this was the biggest uh, shooting day uh, in terms of like pr production value I would say. Um, the, the other challenge uh, and and thing that we focused a lot on this project and on the on the, uh, the next one like this under the same uh, that we had with Juan was um, the the biggest problem when we uh, sit down and talked about the script was we need to find an actress uh, or do we need to find a flamenco dancer that we will teach acting or do we find an actress that we teach flamenco and uh, 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 Juan uh, uh, pushed it, and I think like this is the uh, this is something that every everybody should think about. Like uh, it 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 it's, it is more important to have a proper uh, dancer in a movie about like uh, uh, about flamenco, uh, and then work it out uh, uh, as a as an actress, but. Apart from that, we were super fortunate because we managed to find a, a beautiful and, and a great actress that is also a great flamenco dancer, like probably a, an only person or maybe one of two or three people in whole Poland, which where flamenco is not super popular in Poland. Uh, and we managed to find uh, Anna Ibercher, which is like a, a perfect match. Like, like we could not find anybody else. And once we uh, talked with Anna and we showed her the script, she was obviously like super into it. Like this is this is a movie that like it touches my soul. Like this is the struggles that the act that the main character has. Like these are this is something that like I I've seen in like sometimes in nightmares or like. Give the, the the idea gives me shivers, and and we are and she was in it, and once uh, we had her in the project, uh, she, su she suggested uh, uh, her friend uh, to to play as her husband. So like everything like went super smoothly from from there in terms of like uh, actors that we had in the project. 
And the, the rest that we had there, like all the location stuff, obviously we, we had to manage that. We had to figure out with Olivia uh, how to, uh, f and uh, and also Gregos, uh, how to fit the set design and equipment into the, our uh, short budget. Uh, and how to how to uh, manage to like shoot it? I don't remember how how long did we shoot it? Like it was five days, like five six days, days, five days max. Yeah. We, did, we five, could not five. spend much. Like we couldn't. Yeah, we because we didn't have to, to do the lot. A yeah, lot we time. didn't have we didn't have more more money to do that. So it was probably like five days. We were shooting in like our friend's uh, apartment. Uh, as I said, the biggest uh, and the most import, uh, 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 impressive location was the one where, where we had like those dream sequences. We shot a lot also on streets and stuff. So like all, all, all those things like uh, I try to take care of. And how did the casting process uh, look for uh, Sonder? The casting is was very interesting. We we were fortunate enough to have a casting director working like helping us with with finding certain actors. That obviously later Carol had to contact and convince to do our student <laughs> no budget project, <laughs> but um, but it was very interesting because we end up having actors that that somehow fit the role extremely well in both projects. Like as Carol said we end up having an actress that is both an actress and a flamenco dancer and feels extremely identified with the story that we're creating, mm -hmm. even though we never wrote it with her in mind. Mm -hmm. And with, with Sonder was the same, like, like the guy who plays the, the, um, this uh, kebab dealer, he's actually half Polish, half Syrian. He has a little sister in, in that moment. He had a little sister in Syria that he wanted to bring because of the crisis. Uh, he was very identified when I talked to the main actor, to the to the guy who plays the, the trumpet. He also said to me, like, listen, I understand this human quality of this character. And I feel very identified because my two daughters are asking me constantly and I have to put the balance between what I want to do really and, and that I have to provide as a parent. And the, like, there was always this luck around the projects that end up that, that we end up having people that somehow fail the character very much. And that obviously helps a lot because uh, even though like you can direct the actors, there is a point that if your actor does not believe, like if your actors don't believe in, in, in your project then or don't understand your characters, then mm -hmm. then there is like that dead end. But for us, we were very lucky that, that everything was very clear. They, they felt the character a lot. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, but, but like the process was a normal casting process. Like I have the best producer who just like says, hey, listen, I contacted everybody. They said yes, they said no. And then we make some choices. Exactly. So, so you touched a little bit, Juan, um, about the, the actors felt the characters, but how do you as a director build uh, uh, build and help those uh, actors understand the, the heroes that they are gonna uh, play? Like, how do you work with actors on set? I, I try to, uh, well, obviously it depends on every project. Every project is different and demands different things from you as a director. But I mean, for these projects, I try to have a lot of talking with them as a like person to person, not not person to character, not director to actor, but like, hey, just talk as friends to try to understand the motivations of the character, to try to understand why are you thinking this? How can you find in yourself the motivation that the character is projecting in the film? And, and later, when you have all those motivations very clear, then just putting actions or blocking the scene is the easiest mm. part, you know? Like, mm. like having the right, the right emotion inside the, the actor is, like can make that the blocking fails, but it doesn't matter. You still believe in the story. And I think that process really helped, especially in, in high heels, because they're not talking. And is, if they're not talking, then there there is a lot of like, how are we gonna block this scene if we have no lines to base ourselves? If we if we just have the characters like kind of floating around, you, you cannot say in the script like, okay, so up to this line, we're gonna be talking here, then you move here and then, no, it's like, they're silent. And they're just mm. feeling the tension between each other. So like we had a bunch of conversations separately and then together about like with both actors about like, why are you doing this? How do you feel like this? What is like, what has happened to your character before that brought you to this point? 
and and I think that that is a healthy approach in terms of like you don't come to the actor and you say I want this I demand this and and I don't care if you don't understand it you just mm. do this I I think it's more of an organic way to develop the the feelings of the actors if you allow them to construct the character with you like you don't come with an idea as a director but you build it together or something so how important would you say is it to build backstories for your characters it is important i don't find it like absolutely determinating like like it's not it's not that if your character doesn't have a backstory it will collapse but it also depends on what are the needs of your character and what are the the demands of your character in the story like do you need to know why he's like that or or is it clear enough like depends on how much of an archetype or an stereotype are you playing with there are certain things that society understands very clearly and there are other things that you have to build up a lot i think that it is very important to have a backstory i just don't think that the director is the only one who can build the backstory i think sometimes the actor can propose like hey i find these motivations in me because of this and this and this and they mm. can relate it so much better to their own life Mm. If they help building that, because then they know where to drag the like where where to pull the emotions from, you know. Mm. So uh, I really love not only the colors but the cinematography in high heels. Uh, Grzegorz, can you uh, talk us through a little bit the technical part? So what was the film shot on? Uh, what lenses did you use, and uh, so on? Sure. Um... If I remember correctly, it was Red Dragon, I think. Yeah, I think it's it was Red, red Dragon. Yeah. Some Red uh, with Ultra ultra Primes. Say it's Ultra, ultra primes. primes. Nice Master yeah. Prime, something like that. Ultra, One of those ultra like, very primes. clean lenses. Ultra Primes. Basically, yeah, not the, 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 the <laughs> best set. Like, for me, I, I really don't... Do, don't like working with with red, but anyway, that that was again the only option. Uh, so uh, yeah, we we tried to pull as much as as we can from from that, um, and that was very basic the camera setup. Uh, in terms of lights, we pretty much used natural light with yeah, like yeah. blender and bouncing and from board. mirrors yeah uh, and and, and, and mirrors mirror. that and the mirror yeah one actually one yeah and that that was the the the, the main trick which which allowed me to um to achieve this like sunny look let's say in very small mm -hmm. places without um option to to light from outside because we were shooting on i think third floor or something like that mm -hmm. so just using sun and mirror and and that's it we are positioning that, that mirror in million positions and and that's about it and the dense dense sequence uh, yeah that that was the the heaviest part because um yeah we used like bunch of lights few kilowatts or i don't no, remember even more i think uh, it was around 18 i think uh, something yeah, like that like I'm, yeah a lot of tanks <laughs> a lot of tanks yeah lights. a lot of tanks um and yeah there was there was interesting thing with this blue background we which like finally looks okay but yeah, how did you uh, find this blue background and where was this location <laughs> that was olivia and carol actually and the, and yeah. the amazing camila zabotka who sued the background yeah. the whole night yeah. yeah the whole background was like sewed together by our costumographer yeah. yes she's, uh yeah. yeah and then olivia and and camila uh uh, they they just set it up uh, uh, there so like this was something that we made up and uh, the location um was more like a, yeah more Warszawa, a stage in more Warszawa, a very very nice Ooh. place that we also somehow managed to get for free if i remember correctly <laughs> well, it was yeah. very it was very weird like we tried to put the lights behind so it lit but yeah. then the, the material even it was the best that we could get but it was not ex exactly ideal so you could see the yeah. light so we had to place the lights in like basically the, yeah. Like, but yeah basically it was the super whole heavy. idea which i had in pre-production discussed with the the gaffer 
everything went wrong. Basically, the, the, the opposite what I expected. Yeah, so... because, like, if I remember correctly, it was because the way that we wanted to do it and to have a proper material that we had, it would cost like a few thousand dollars yeah, to have yes. such a it huge uh, blue carting. Like it was impossible for our budget to manage. So like Olivia and Camila, they just found like very cheap blue material, like in those stripes and they like sew it. And then obviously like even like the best, like Camila is like, it was visible sometimes. Like, like there was like a, a folded part in the middle and stuff. And like we were for fighting with this. And like yeah, and, all, all and of stuff. course there was no time to test the, the this thing be before shooting, so we just applied run and gun, let's say. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, and yeah, that that was hard hard thing to 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 manage. This thing was hard. But let me yeah. ask you: Is it good sometimes as a film director to have limitations? Uh, One thousand percent. Yeah. Why? I mean, I mean, ideally. I would like to say, after doing a few films, especially we, we, we three have been working together for a really long time, I wish that right now we had no limitations. We know each other very well, we know our things. They, the two of them are extremely professional. So I wish that we could get everything. But the reality is, especially for me, as a storyteller, or whatever you, you call it, I, I think a limitation always pushes your creativity. Mm. always pushes your creativity when you have everything you end up in a place that you're like if it wasn't the script cool if it's not whatever we we like you stop caring so much and um, and when you have these things like like high heels is the perfect example we had almost no budget and we end up with a crew of people that really believed in the project doing like everybody pushing for the same thing and for the same concept and you can tell that somehow there is love in the in the film like in in the craft of a film and i think that is the like that ends up resulting in like the somehow success that the film got in the festival run it's because there is a soul behind the there is a soul behind the 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 construction of the film it's not it's not just like oh yeah we had some money we decided to do this because it looks cool it's like you have to think every shot you have to think the best possible way to tell it in a very short amount of time with no lights with no nothing asking for a lot of favors in your friend's apartment with your other friends doing the material all night uh but in including some... sorry including shooting chronologically because of yeah. natural light <laughs> yeah, yeah you, can, you, can not, you cannot shoot non-chronologically <laughs> as it usually is is like you have a lot of yeah Maybe <laughs> having a bit less of limitations could help. <laughs> yeah, but I probably. Think, but I think most, like in most of the cases, having a certain like all films will have problems, even the films with like billions of dollars into it. So all those limitations actually push you to like ask yourself what is extremely necessary for the story. What mm. do I really want to say? And and that helps the narration and and that helps the the whole storytelling that is behind it. Great. You mentioned a little bit about film festivals. So, what role have film festivals played in your life so far? Why do you think film festivals are necessary, and how can we get the most out of them as a filmmaker? I <laughs> film festivals are a platform, as I as I see it, are a platform for filmmakers like me who comes from Colombia and has no connections to somehow be seen, to somehow be seen by somebody in the other side of the world that you would never be able to show your work to, you know? Mm. I understand that platforms like YouTube, Vimeo and, and stuff like that also allow a worldwide audience, but but then you have to go and convince them. But somehow when there is a uh, like curatory uh, process behind the film festivals and you get into it, people have, a certain amount of trust into the festival. They go to see the festival because they know that they're going to see something good. If you're part of, some, of, of that, then that helps you build, somehow build your career, you know? Also, it's a, it's a step, as in like, you go to a bunch of festivals, you win a few awards, then it's easier for you to convince other people to say, hey, listen, now I need more money, now I need bigger things, now I want more actors big set design, bigger lights, and people would say, why should I give you my money, man? And then you say, you should give me your money because I know how to do things, and this is a proof of how I do things. 
mm. the, the festivals and the recognition and, and all that helps you as a director, as a, mean, a completely independent director to, to see some light and to home, somehow push yourself to the next step. And I think that is a very valuable thing of film festivals and a very necessary thing because otherwise you will have to compete with the whole industry of people who have been doing this either for years or have the connections to get in there or like, you know, like all the, all the circles that come with the industry that, that somehow the film festivals are a, a, a way around of it. So uh, for a young filmmaker or our online audience that are watching, what are the most important and practical tips you would like to give them looking back at your own filmmaking journey so far. So maybe let's start this time with Carol. Okay, so, uh, well, I am a producer. So uh, <laughs> my tips are gonna be like, uh, be organized, try, uh, be organized. yes, wake up. Uh, like, <laughs> the, the, wake up in the morning when you have a shooting. No, like, like jokes aside, I think like the, be, the, the most important thing, uh, like for if there are any students that are right now in school or some people that are planning to go to Warsaw Film School or any adult film school, whatever, uh, the most important thing that you can take out from the school is your friends and people who you're going to work with. Because like if you have a crew of people that you worked with uh, and like you had struggles, you had happy times, like you uh, drink on parties and then you didn't sleep for three days because you were shooting night scenes or whatever uh you 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 the crew is the most important thing then uh, because you you asked like uh, juan earlier there was this question about like when you know the script is ready uh, mm -hmm. or something like that mm -hmm. i think like you know when the script is ready when the whole of your crew is like ready to like to do the script like everybody feels the script and like then the script is ready in my mm -hmm. opinion because like I, every time we worked together like we we knew the script even before it was it it was done so so in my opinion and I, I, if if this if you like those movies like this is something that was created out of like this notice that like we worked on that really hard like actually when we were shooting Zonder we were uh, uh, during this summer we were shooting like two or three uh, no two two other movies uh, of our friends like almost with the same crew and like after all those three movies like we were so exhausted and like we were so tired that like we had to have like few weeks of break like we didn't look at each other and whatever but like once we came back we came back stronger and like the next year like we were we were we knew what we are up for like we know our limits we know like where where to put effort and where where to give up where you can like work around uh something so like the practice like the, the proper crew people that you trust and uh and uh practice like you will never know what is your limit until you reach your limit and once you reach it then you can like take something from that and like you you know like how to approach it the next time and for a young uh, filmmaker i think this is this is one of the advices i would give so Grzegorz, uh, do you have anything to add from a yeah, cinematography point of view completely agree <laughs> With, with, with Carol, but from more like technical point of view, let's say since from cinematographer point mm. of view, um, I would add, um, don't be afraid of experimenting, like pushing your limits, let's say, but also be aware of technical stuff, which can be the, the, the barrier which you cannot cross or you shouldn't cross because of so uh and why i'm saying that is because if you're if you are aware of those limitations and you push enough to know where is the boundary you know how to find balance in situations where you need to fight for example with blue background and you need to you need to figure out something then you know in which way how much can you go to for example pull it in post or mm. how to be safe or or how to achieve certain effect mm. i mean like lighting like lighting shim or something mm. basically if you don't you do not experiment 
you cannot like be um, be sure on set what you're doing mm. it's it's like lottery mm. so use your free time or not even not free time but on small shootings like this, those two minute attitudes on the first year don't be afraid of of making something wrong or too strong or too less mm. experiment so just to our online audience the two minute etudes are the two minute short film exercises that students at warsaw film school do on the first year and uh, they have different topics um which they need to make short films so this is what Krekos was um uh, talking a little bit about to push yourselves then uh, yeah. So, Juan, what are the tips you would like to give young filmmakers? I, I, I think the like if I, if I were to talk to myself, I don't know, twelve years ago when I started filmmaking, is um, that film is a really long process, and to be aware of that and to push a lot, a lot in every single sense, not to just push for your vision as in like I am a great director, you should listen to me, but like work a lot in other projects, understand and learn from their mistakes. So you don't like do the same mistakes, uh, help a lot of people. So they, so then when you don't have the budget, they can help you, you know, they will help you because you help them at some point work in every single set that you have, go to every time on location that you have, wake up early, write the script. And if you think you have the right version of your script, write another version because it can be improved, push the, the post-production and push on set like every single time push the boundary try to be better because there's always room for improvement like every director in the world in history ha can always be better and and you will not know until you as carol said until you reach that limit you will not know that that was one limit and then there is a new one that you yeah. have to reach now mm. and um i would say like like there is this sometimes you will face this feeling of like i don't know why i'm doing this like this is never gonna happen or this is never gonna end or this is terrible or i'm not happy at all with this just push push it for it to be better if you want to do a dream sequence do the best possible dream sequence that you want to make and if you want to do a documentary just push for the best and most real and most human version of that you know like push for a vision that you have but push it cleverly don't push it like oh i have a vision and that's it push it like understanding your limitations understanding what you can what you can do and understanding that every story has been told so far every story has been told since a really long time ago it's about how you say it how mm. you as a storyteller are going to tell your story what what will make it different because you're saying it you know mm. and and based on that i will just say like don't, don't give up <laughs> it's it's a long run but but it's really rewarding when you when you get to see the movie made, it's yeah. always a very nice feeling, and and for sure it's a nice feeling for the crew when you say to them like, "Hey, the movie is finished. Here it is, and thank you for everything." So yeah. you talked a lot about pushing yourself. Um, how important is mentorship and having a creative support from someone uh, maybe who has been in the industry a little bit longer and who was your mentor for your films? And tell a little bit about mentorship and the process of having a creative uh, mentor and support. And I would like to ask this to all of you. Uh, so okay. maybe start with Juan. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think mentorship is extremely important, but I think mentorship not only comes from what we would consider normally mentors. A mentor can be somebody that you just like his films and he's, he's the same age as you and he's the same lack, he has the same lack of experience that you have, but somehow you trust that instinct and you just say, hey, listen, I have this. I just want some feedback. Mentorship can come from every possible feedback that you have, as well as like very experienced people. And I think it's about knowing how to listen to them, not only like, oh yeah, I will do whatever you say, but, it, but it's in like, what are you trying to say and to give an input to my film that I can that I can like try to adapt to my film without it turning into your film? You know, like. Um, but I think in general, like 
working with mentors is very, very helpful. They, uh, they can always give you a fresh idea. They can always turn the thing around because they are very, like, if you are working with a mentor that is very experienced, they can always ask you the right questions that you're like, oh my God, I didn't think of that. Or like, I need to rewrite my script or, or like, we need to change the whole like process as we thought it was going to be. Uh, because they simply have that instinct of film development. And that, that is something that you gain with experience and with the years. I work on my first, on my, on, on Sonder. Uh, I work with Marek Brodsky, which was a very interesting like relationship. He's a very warm person and like super nice and always very joyful. And like, he's always pushing you to be the best. And, and for High Hills, I work with, with Jarek Kups, who was, um, like an amazing mentor he was always trying to get the best out of me and push it into my film like he was not telling me how to do things he was just asking me the right question so i could ask myself how to make my film better and i think that is very clever is to uh, like to understand how because at the end they're not gonna do the movie for you you know like you will have to go and face the crew and face the set and face the actors and face the reality of sometimes some films and um, and so a mentor can like help you with guidance and and with support and like, a lot of moral support. Thank you, Grzegorz. Mm. Who was your cinematography mentor, and how was that process working together? For High Hills, I think we didn't have cinematography mentor. I think because that that was my second or third film in that summer I was doing. Okay. I, I think. So for high heels, I didn't have a mentor, but uh, in general, I agree with, with Juan, but also I wanted to add that also mentor is helpful in the way that sometimes he or she propose you things or try to, let's say, push you toward things which, which are not your idea, let's say, or not your direction. And that sometimes makes you decide that, yeah, maybe I will be wrong, but I want to try to do it by my idea, you know, my way. And that's also help in, in some way. You, you may fail in the, in the end, but sometimes it's, it's good opportunity to have this, let's say, wall, which is saying, go right. And you're saying, no, I'm going left and just try things. So, right. To make it your decision, yeah. like the, your like decision, make, yeah. yeah, like not to make a mistake because you had no clue. Yeah. Uh, if you are to make a mistake, then like make it deliberate, like because yeah. you wanted to try, as as Gregor yeah. said before, like because we wanted to experiment. If we fail, then we fail, but make it like with, like, like think about it, right? Like be prepared to fail because you know you are doing something that like is. Like maybe unorthodox and are extraordinary. Uh, I uh, my my mentor during like all the production uh, in Warsaw Film School was uh, Mr. Jarek Grzymała, who was uh, uh, who was uh, um, a production manager when I was in school. Uh, uh, um, and uh, most important things that I uh, took from Mr. Jarek is like like I, I based mostly on his experience, like because obviously like work. Uh, like production work and like working as a production manager is a is a different different thing than like being a director and a cinematographer so like for me the most important things like that is an actual like the, the experience is like super important in a mentor to know uh how to approach things like to ask him about like what type of deal i have to do where, where and uh, what type of contract i have to write with an actor mm -hmm. like what are like contacts to like some locations where i can get like some uh furniture where i can get a gun where uh do you have a like maybe to like ask for a contact for a uh, pyrotechnician or whatever like these are more more of like like concrete like advices or or, or like uh, 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 um, a very direct uh, um, direct help uh, which which obviously like this is due to the fact that uh, uh, I am a producer so so yes Great. So uh, I would like to ask all of you also, what makes a, a film great for you? Are there certain qualities that make a film better for you? 
hard question. <laughs> you can start, Carlitos. Uh, okay, I will start. I will start with. Uh, there is one quality that I really like that, like Juan, Juan represents pretty well, in my opinion. Uh, uh, which, like, which is also the thing that, like, I really like to love, uh, like to work with him, and I work with him with a lot of projects. It's like the this, like. The, this type of like magical realism that he brings with uh, with w with his projects, uh, like somehow w when the story is somehow grounded in the reality and like tells the story of like normal people in in a normal world, but not in a regular way, like that tries to make it like more of a fairy tale, but like still grounded in in reality. Like in my opinion, these are the, like the most interesting stories. That's why I also really like. Uh, like uh, animations, mostly due to like the Ghibli Studio and stuff. Like this is also something that like gives me this feeling. Even though like we have like, like some fantastic creatures and stuff, mm -hmm. like, uh, we are still talking about like human emotions. Like mm -hmm. very sometimes very simple, uh, uh, very simple uh, 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 conflicts that are, are, are that uh, that that are real, like relatable, like to 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 everyone. Hmm. Checos? Um, it's very hard for me <laughs> to answer that question because it constantly develops in my head. Like this, there is no one one thing which I can point that is, that that makes the decision. Let's say if I like the film or not. Like a few years ago, I was I can say that. Uh, kind of in ignorant, and I was only watching the Im beautiful images, let's say. Mm -hmm. And after a few years, I I started like watching things that I would wouldn't a few years ago in terms of image, but let's say normal people, the, the TV series, which I know from Juan, by the way, uh, is one of these things which is completely not my style in terms of cinematography. But I watched it and and I cried. I laughed, and yeah. So it, it changes constantly for me. I cannot answer to that question. Okay, Juan. I think Grzeszek said something something that that really pointed what I what I was going to say, which is that I think a great film for me is something that helps me to connect with it, like that somehow grabs me and puts me in a different universe for a small period of time. Mm. I'm not I'm not thinking of I have to do something else like I'm thinking of the film and that that comes with many different aspects can come with like um, an amazing storytelling or can come with like I don't know Roger Dickens or many many different things can help to to create a universe that you believe in but mostly it comes with the fact that you can relate to it and you can relate to it because of what Carol said of like human emotions, mm. but you, but you can also relate to it because it's outstandingly beautiful or because it's told in a way that you were not expecting or because it's like, you know, when you're, when you're, when you're getting into something that is a bit late and you're starting to watch a movie that is a bit late, but 10 minutes later, you're like, I don't care if I miss the beginning, I'm not going to stop watching this. That sort of thing, I think, makes a, a, a film amazing, which is the fact that can, like, get you into its universe and, like, like keep you there until the end, wanting to know more, wanting to experience it. I, I think, and that comes in every genre, you know, like, it's, it's a matter of, like, if a film is well made and well told and, and like, and it has to say something important. Mm -hmm. But I also think, if I can add something, yeah, yeah. that sometimes uh, it depends on your uh, your time in life or absolutely, your, absolutely, your absolutely. humor, or whatever. Like the situation around you can change at what you're looking for, yeah. for from the movie or TV series mm -hmm. or whatever. If you're sad, you're looking for sad things and. That's yeah, a, a movie you know, a movie that touches you a lot in a certain moment in your life, then you can watch ten years later and you're like, and it's like oh, it was well, not really? that good. <laughs> yeah. It was not that good. But yeah. also when you watch a movie and then you watch it years later and it's still good, and then you watch it again and it's still good, and then you're like, Oh well, well this is a masterpiece, I guess. Or at least my kind of masterpiece, because <laughs> I'm always gonna like it. Yeah. 
So uh, you pitch turbo. <laughs> I, I will uh, ask Grzegorz then because you had um, problems with um, that question. So maybe I t twist it around and go, okay. when were you angry at a movie the last time? What set you off? So are there common qualities in cinema that you dislike? And is it something that you try to subvert, avoid or rebel against in your own work? <laughs> Can I answer the same way? <laughs> it develops all the time. No, but I think, uh, like, uh, I really, really hate, um, like, how is it called in English? Banana. Banal. Yeah, like, banal. 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 Banal things. Yeah. Like, things that you that you watch it and you know that this scene will end in that way. And actually you can, you can watch the film uh, it, when it's predictable. Mm. Yeah. Mm. When, when you can like watch it in two times the speed and, or skip some, some scenes and you still know mm. what is happening. Mm. But I think it's for, for everybody like that. Bas basically you're not enjoying the, 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 the story or something. I don't know that 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 that's the thing which comes, like automatically makes me turn it off on Netflix. If it's Netflix, if it's cinema, then yeah, there's a problem. <laughs> and Juan, I but this is like very personal. Like this mm -hmm. is not a general thing. I I really dislike when when a film like tries to explain, like over explain things to me that are very clear. Like mm -hmm. when a film is very obvious and it's like, yeah, I know. And they're like, no, but it's like this because of this. And I'm like, yes, I know. <laughs> like, I, I really dislike that in a film because it makes me feel that it's not well narrated and that it didn't take into account the audience. And, yeah. and I think that that is extremely important is like that a film should know that it's not made for the director to like enjoy at home but it should be for the world to see it. Uh, and if you're making something with the assumption that the audience is stupid or with the assumption that, that the audience will fall for your joke when your joke is really bad, then then I don't like that because it, it breaks my connection with the film. The thing that I was talking before that really liked about the film that, that helps me to connect with this universe. When I find these things, I it, it breaks that connection and, and it takes me out of the cinematic universe and gets me very angry. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Carol, I wanted to ask you, because you mentioned a little bit about being a film student and studying um, is where you build your team. So how was it studying at Warsaw Film School? Can you share some of your uh, greatest memories with the audience? Like, but on set, like in school or like in general during the time where... During where your we time studying? at Warsaw Film School. So it can be either uh, a film set memory or uh, from your time as a student. But maybe it would be nicer to hear some uh, memories from the uh, film sets. Yeah, from film sets and like I, I, I'm thinking about some uh, film sets like that we had uh, that of the movies that we are what like that are premiered today. So Zonder and High Heel. So like, if we are talking about Zonder, I think like the like the memory the memory I remember the most is like um, there are, there are scenes. Uh, um, the main character, the one from Syria, is is. Uh, uh, having a, a, a food truck with kebab, right? So we were searching very long time for this this type of like uh, camper that we like that could be set up as a as a uh, uh, as a kebab store. And um, when we set it up, uh, we set it up like near the park, and like Olivia was preparing all the set design. We had like the meat and stuff. And whenever somebody was inside there. And we were like shooting in a park or we had like different scenes anywhere and like we had just somebody who was like there to like as as a security like nobody happens to our prop uh, kebab store like people were coming around and like asking like for a kebab like or, or like with a, with, a, with a garlic sauce or whatever and we're like no no we don't sell kebab here like this is a pin set like this, this is not operating 
like it happened again and again <laughs> and again <laughs> and and then finally like we like uh, and also like we have uh, um, in this scene um, when uh, the main character leaves and like there is somebody else in this kebab store selling the kebab and it's actually Juan which we dressed like in this like ridiculous t-shirt and stuff yeah. and like actually the funny part is like when we didn't have the camera on, obviously, and like he was like grunting about, like, it was like, I had the freshest kept up in Warsaw. Da, 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 da. Like, it was like, uh, these are those moments, like, like I, I remember that and I will never forget it, actually. Uh, it's super cool. And also, I will never forget, like, in, in, in High Heels, when there is this scene where uh, the main character, the main characters are, are like, at the very end, they are. Um, uh, going through the city, like the Warsaw Old Town, and they are passing through like this art, and like there are a lot of like very colorful people, which uh, which like all of them is our crew members. Like there is everybody almost that. If somebody was not Except needed, be yeah, if somebody <laughs> was not needed behind the camera, he was in front of in the front camera. Of the camera and, yes. Yeah, Camila prepared a, like a, a like. It's hard, like not hundred, like but many, like many different costumes, like colorful costumes, like everybody dressed very colorful, and like this was like this the what the last scene that we shot, like everyone was dressed up very colorful, and like once we were done, we we posed like all together, the whole crew in those like costumes, like everybody, and then we have like those this this picture that we on at the old town, like we we are everybody uh, there. Actually, Zonder, we, we finished Zonder also. The last scene that we shot was also in the old town, if I remember correctly. Yeah. yeah. And, and yeah, and, like, also, like, uh, I will remember that, that uh, for, forever, probably. Amazing. So I would like to ask if our online audience, if you have any questions to our fantastic filmmakers, you can post them in the comments section. Um, so uh, some final questions that I would like to ask you. What are your uh, next up and coming projects and what are you working on right now? And what have you done uh, since uh, you finished uh, the projects of High Heels and Sonder? Well, Karol, Karol can answer because yeah. he's the most famous of all of us. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, not not really. Uh, well, right now I'm working in Warsaw Film School uh, as a uh, as ex executive producer for like student projects, and like I'm focusing mostly to help uh, our students to uh, to create their own zonders and high heels and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, well, like, we did a lot of projects uh, uh, after we done that, like um, some music Hello. videos. Yeah, yeah, that, like. Like it's like it's not even like like there's no point of like uh, pointing it out. Like we we, we managed to do. Uh, I, I I was chosen, and also with you, Veronica, we managed to do like a, a feature movie in Warsaw Film School and stuff. Like when uh, with Czechos, they did also their diploma. We did like every, each of us like we we did some music videos, like other uh, short etudes. We helped with our friends' projects, some commercial stuff, like. You've been lot, busy. Like, well, all, all of us have been, I think. So. Yeah. So, uh, Grzegorz, can you tell me a little bit about the latest projects you've been working on? And, and... Yeah, like, um, I'm working in the industry, basically, as sometimes camera assistant, sometimes camera operator, sometimes on smaller things, of course, because it's a ladder. You need to, to go up slowly uh, as, as DOP. Um, yeah, so it's been like few TV series, um, TV theaters, a few movies, and yeah, on different positions. So. And Juan? I felt very sad after I left my friend, so I didn't do any other movie. No, you finished the movie. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I know. Like, yeah, yeah, of course, uh, with them. <laughs> That's yeah. it, anyway. So, so <laughs> oh, can man. you tell me about this latest project that is now um, being sent out to film festivals? Yeah. Your newest project. It was, uh, it was a very interesting project. It was uh, the culmination of a whole like period in WSF that started with a very short attitude that was based on that I did with Carol. 
and then the, in a longer movie that I did with Grzeszek. And um, mm. we have, we, but we have done like since since Thunder and High Hills, we have also done uh, many other films, music videos. Yeah. We flip, we flipped a wall, we built a wall in the middle of the school <laughs> yeah. to yeah. break it up. We like yeah. like we were in a lot of things, but um, uh, like lately, I am working right now in the post production part of the Philharmonic Orchestra here in Colombia but also promoting the new the new film that we did with Grzeszek that hopefully will will go like like far enough <laughs> and uh, yeah and uh, no not much like working working in separate projects like directing some stuff and and helping in different departments that that is something that really that I really learned from USF is to to work in every department, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, because at the end of the day, if I were only to direct my things and forget about it, then I will end up the school with I don't know five films. But because I worked in absolutely everything, I left USF with more than a hundred film sets on my like resume. So like, well, you know, yeah. that that is always something that you will have time later for sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, exactly. uh, I'm a believer of social media and in many aspects of the film process. So are you guys on social media and do you use it for your work? Why or why not? Uh, I, I, I wish I could be so much better at social media. I'm really, really bad at it. I'm like <laughs> at promoting myself and like selling the whole film product that I, that I do. I'm really bad at it, but I think it's important. I wish I could be better at it. Uh, I, I think a lot of people can profit from it and can like really get advantage from it, get a lot of contacts, get, you know, like it, it does help, especially in, in today's world. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm on social media, but mostly as a viewer because I'm really bad. <laughs> yeah, I go? yeah Same I'm, with I'm, me. I'm also trying and I had so many situations when I saw the proof that it's working like with my friends and on sets like on, on commercial sets that basically it's working it make, makes you work more but like i always have this this barrier that you know maybe it's it's not so good or i i, I why should i do that or something like that or i'm i'm start starting something like posting and after a few days it's like yeah, I'm out of ideas, uh, or or the the, the 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 images, simply. So yeah, it's it's very but, hard. But part for which... sure, for sure, it helps. Like like yeah, especially helps. for example in the cinematography department, they start posting like I'm working on this, on this, on this, on this, on this, and they get really get into the radar of the industry. They start getting calls. They they know oh you work in this project. I'm gonna call you for mm -hmm. this. And, you know, it it does help to build a network. Yeah. yeah, so for young filmmakers, it's really important to not only build your portfolio, but also yeah. get yourself out there so people uh, can know about you. So um, if we don't have any more questions from the audience, um, then I would like to round, round off our Q&A. So I would like to thank you guys so much for this lovely Q&A session. Thank you for all your amazing input into the life of filmmaking, but also into the two films, Sonder and High Heels. And uh, I would like to uh, thank you so much to the audience for uh, watching this Q&A of the Warsaw Film School produced short films. Uh, so thank you guys so much and please make sure to join us in two weeks where we will have a new Warsaw Film School online premiere here at the Warsaw Film School channel on YouTube. Thank you guys so much for this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for inviting Bye. me. Bye. Bye. Bye.